not just for the police department. Uh, selfishly speaking, I believe that we need to look at diversity in all of the public safety departments. And so all of that training that we're going to be taking there will be utilizing those individuals that are part of those uh, training classes to be used in fire. They'll be used in corrections. Wherever we can find a home for them, we can find, we'll find a home for them. Um, <clears throat> As we get closer uh, to this, there's one more piece I want to add about the protesters. As, as, as the organizations on the police side, state, county, uh, and the city have been meeting and developing how they want to handle going forward, the protesters have been doing the same. Uh, make sure we clearly understand that they are doing exactly what we're doing. They have now had their meetings that they have that are closed. If you are not a member of their group, they're patting you down before you come into those meetings. And those meetings have become much more structured and much more organized. Uh, they're planning on how to uh, develop Team A and Team B and Team C to be able to engage the officers what, wherever it may occur. Uh, so we're seeing a lot more structure and organization from the protesters. They have created their own ride equipment. They have the uh, shields they're making shields out of woods which we've seen uh, on the internet as well and they're also making um, uh, kits that if tear gas is shot to be able to uh, cover themselves with the tear how to, to get that out of their eyes and stuff as quickly too so they are they're doing a much better job of planning as they move forward and their social media uh, structure has changed dramatically from the beginning to now too they were a lot more open in the beginning stages of sharing their information um, on social media. There were a lot more live streams than what they have now. So as the process changes, they're changing their structures and moving forward too with that. Um, <clears throat> here's the thing that we need to know. The majority of the protesters are here are here to protest peacefully. Um, and we understand that in, and when we look at the whole scheme of things, you know, we're talking 2,000, maybe 3,000 people total or max that are, are here. And the majority of those are going to be protesting peacefully. So we are hoping to be able to work with them wherever we can when the need is possible for those things. Um, I kind of briefly mentioned earlier that our fire department is another area of concern for uh, our, our protection. And so we, we're making sure that they're going to go on a, uh, uh, their shifts will change on Sunday of this week and as far as the hours that they'll be working. And we're doing that so that we can have the right protection for them as they go out there. Again, if they go to a hot spot, we will have security for them when they go into those hot spots. Um, the other thing that we've done, I think you see, even I'm wearing my badge, we've kind of asked people to start wearing their badges around because we want to make sure that we're doing a good job here. I mean, a good job in all of our buildings as we focus on that. Now, all of this is planning that we don't know what's going to happen. We don't. This is, a, this is an unusual time, and not only for the city of St. Louis, but in the history of the United States. Uh, we really don't know what's going to happen. What we do know is our city is important to each and every one of us, and protecting our city is important to each and every one of us, just like protecting everyone's First Amendment right is important to each and every one of us. So we are going to be as fluid as we need to be, uh, as aggressive as we need to be if we need to be aggressive, which is not our goal at whatsoever, but we want to make sure that we are protecting our properties and the properties of our, our um, constituents in, in, the, in the city. One of the questions, as I mentioned, that was asked earlier is that if we need to, if you need to get a hold of anybody um, uh, as far as what is happening in your uh, district, contact the chief of police. Uh, he said, just uh, if you don't have a cell phone number, I'll get it to you and we'll make sure that the, the aldermen have that ability to contact them. And finally, the other piece of this too is that we, we plan this out to every, looking at every aspect, uh, even to our NSOs. And, and how we're going to be utilizing our NSOs going forward too. Um, we're going to e they're going to either be working from their office or working um, from the homes, but we're not going to put them out on the streets for the first couple of days or so until we see how things are going and then we'll go from there. Uh, with that being said, it kind of gives you an overview of what we have done uh, 
from a planning perspective in the city. Uh, we want to make sure that we are protecting your, your areas, your districts. We want to make sure that we are giving uh, every protester the, the ability to have their uh, First Amendment rights protected. Yes. Oh, I'm from 60. Thank you. My concern is the size of tariffs. And that's because if you're not aware, Ferguson, they took out their charter cable. So they had no access to television. And so they didn't know what was going on. So I'm concerned about what happens. You can take some call. What happens if they take out the cell tower? What happens if they put all of our information out on the internet? Um, what are we doing about cyber terrorism? That is what I'm concerned about. I can tell you from from the uh, side that we have done is what we've increased the level of protection for the city's uh, uh, technology. Uh, one of the things that we've asked for our officers and and and, and I actually had mentioned it earlier for uh, maybe even for our aldermen is that you you may want to if you have a Facebook page you may want to protect that more uh, those type of things. I just don't know for that. Element. I'd like to know how can we afford to send our police officers out into Ferguson? And I have a ward like I have 13,000 people and 10 police officers are guarding me at night. And west, east of Newstead, I only have three police officers guarding half of my ward. And I look and see all that manpower out in Ferguson running up and down the street. I, I had no idea we had that type of equipment. When I ask for more police officers in my community, they tell me we don't have it. And I think this thing is over exaggerated. We feel we are fueling the opposition to make, and, and I feel like it's a war against the people. And, I'm, and I thank God for those white guys that's out there that's protesting because it seemed like it was a war against blacks. But, but the main thing is that how can we send a, that type of police resource out in Ferguson and I need cops in my neighborhood and then they tell me we don't have money, we don't have people to patrol, I have to get moonlight police and my citizens are up and on. My whole ward is Michael Brown. It has totally been shot in the face and disparate and disservice and we want to know why is this going on out, out in Ferguson. We need to be patrolling the mean streets of St. Louis. I believe I stated it earlier that our officers are going to be for the city of St. Louis unless there was an emergency call for anybody to go to Ferguson. So we're not planning on putting any of our officers out in Ferguson. <coughs> our first and foremost, as I stated earlier, is to protect the city of St. Louis. That's what I want to do. Thank you. Um, I was informed last night that I should expect to see police posted as well as National Guard at the Riverview McLaren location. And I understand this, you can't really tell when the verdict will be read, but my question is, is it necessary yet when nothing has really happened? The 6th District Police Department is probably two or three miles from there. And I just am a little concerned that we wake up tomorrow and see our neighborhood sees National Guard when nothing has really happened yet. Um, I don't think it takes that long to get to that site if something happens. And I think that I'm in a good position to be able to alert the police of anything that I feel is threatening. And well, I just part I of the reason that uh, you're, we're here today is to let you know there's, a, there's so many rumors that are out there that I can't control the rumors, but there is, that has not been even broached as a topic. Um, and so it's, it's easier to, as if you really have a concern and really have an issue, just call the chief and I think he'll, he'll talk, let you know what, but there's no plans for that at this point in time. And can we please be informed if that is to happen, that we're supposed to see National Guard in the community because that is the location of the August 19th shooting. And I would like to know before they go that, that was not a, uh, an area that was more than 45 areas okay. that we were talking about. Uh, and also, if they cannot get a hold of the chief, can they get, uh, can the elected officials get your cell phone also so that we make sure they get somebody? All right, Ms. Thompson. Uh, piggybacking on uh, what the uh, alderwoman said about notification, 
I don't know, I can't speak for any of the other uh, city wives, but I speak for uh, myself about uh, having uh, notification. The notification that I got about the uh, guards, about the in increased security, um, public safety concerns about having folks out on the street and also making sure that the staff and everybody is protected. I got that way after the fact. I, I first got it on Facebook, and then I next received it from the business journal. It wasn't until yesterday that I received a, uh, a letter from the mayor detailed. You know, I have, I have employees on the street throughout the city every single day. And so I too am concerned about their safety. And so my whole thing is about communication and when were the city wives notified? Um, we were, like last week was when we had our first conversation about having this meeting. This meeting could have taken place on Monday, Tuesday, but it was this week that the information was disseminated. No, she's talking about something different. Oh, something different? Yeah, she's yeah so just piggybacking on Mavis's uh, comments, same thing. I found out on Facebook that the mayor re requested an additional 400 troops, and all of my employees are out in the street as well. I've got parking enforcement officers, several garages where they are outside. So, you know, we would like some sort of advanced notification if things are going to change, you know, so we can notify our employees and families as well if, if there's going to be something where they need to stay home or stand down or, you know, or what? Is there some sort of notification plan for, you know, for the elected officials and, you know, and for the city in general on, on what, you know, what your contingency plan is on? And just out of okay. common courtesy. Okay. That's all right. That's all. What I will do is I will find out that for you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, to follow up on that, though, so the only um, method of communication you mentioned so far is for us, in the case of an emergency <coughs> or something, to text the chief. Um, one, I think the chief is going to have his hands full if something's going on. Two, I don't think that's the way the communication should go. I think a lot of us would like to see the administration uh, and the public safety department uh, proactively communicating with us. So if something is happening, and frankly, you guys should know it, uh, in many cases, before we will, that you let us know and inform us. So that's the kind of communication I like to see, coming from you guys to us, not us having no. to like each individual autumn and trying to get something from you guys. Okay. Um, also, uh, well, I was going to follow up with, with, with uh, the police chief in saying that, so we're not supposed to work with our captains. I work really good with my captains. Uh, she was asking. So why would we also work with our captains? Oh, I have a very good relationship with my captains. We had that we, conversation that right, we had. Not only that, not just that, the other one too. So we email and we stay in contact. Oh, absolutely. So because I, my concern is you're trying to call the police team, 500 people trying to call okay. the police team, you're not going to get anything. But if there is something that we need to know in mass, I, if it's not, I don't know if you think emails are secure or whatever. I have my public and private one. But there ought to be some other way uh, to get that information to us in mass in a hurry. Okay. Um, my other question I have is, so you talked about, well, I want to make a, a point. You talked about uh, the protesters. What I want to separate is the protesters and the criminals. They are not one and the same. Okay, and I hear people saying all of this stuff. I come from a defense background, so my thing is the protesters can be out there protesting with their First Amendment right as long as the people got the Second Amendment right, okay? So if people don't like it, get over it. As long as they're not breaking the law, they can do it, and I support that. I might be out there with them, actually, okay? Um, and I'm going to make sure I not break the law. I'm not going to show up with a gun. I'm not going to be drinking because I don't drink, okay? So, uh, and I ain't standing behind nobody's back because you all know I'm saying to her face, okay? So, um, but, but the other thing is you talked about 17 of 19 rules of engagement were agreed upon. What were the ones that kept us from coming to a full agreement? Are you able to divulge that? You can't. Okay, thank you. And this is a follow-up on what was said earlier in terms of the communication. I appreciate that we have that communication. I'll just say that we have a um, model for that from July 19th of 2006. There was sort of a daily communication to all aldermen from some, a point person in the mayor's office or from your office. Maybe we can do that same thing. But communication might be down. 
So there might be some need for us to know where we can get information yep. if all communications are done. Right. Right. I, I just had a couple of questions. One is just uh, what level of support are we getting from the federal and state government? So they, uh, obviously you talked about 400 uh, guardsmen and we don't have a commitment on that. Are, are we getting state troopers? Is anybody in the federal government that's helping us out? Or? Can you tell me what I have, I have several questions. So I, I like is it, what, uh, what kind of support are we getting from the state and federal government? At this time, there's no government we're getting no support. Um, and the state government at this point would be the, uh, the National Guard. That's it. So, and, then, and that's it. So we, we've got nobody from like the Justice Department or uh, the FBI or anything like that helping us out with cybersecurity or uh, coming in and giving us technical assistance. They're, they will be a part of the command central, so they'll be sharing information that they may have gathered at that time to us. So they, they have they sent people here, or is there, are they going to be doing that from D.C.? Or? No, they'll be here in our command central. Okay, so have they sent like two guys out here? Or? That's information I would rather not share at this time. Okay, but they, they are involved in it? Yes. Okay, and I, my concern isn't, as was said earlier, about peaceful protesters. I think that's, uh, my concern is, is people who come here to, to create problems are the fact of the general population, criminals within the general population, who feel that somehow or another this is an entitlement for them to go out and commit crimes, and I'm worried about hot spots that, that are completely away from the protests that, that aren't going to be controlled. Are we going to have police on regular patrols are, are, are available to address that if we have people that are uh, The answer to that is yes. That's the whole purpose of increasing the number on the streets so they can be doing their regular patrols in their regions, in their areas. Wait a minute. Alderman here first. Um, how do we come up with the ask of 400 um, I don't have a number for that and why, and I don't know if we're going to get 400. Um, that wasn't given to me as a, a direction. All I can tell you is this, is the reason for them is secondary and so that we can put our officers in the streets to do their job on the streets as opposed to being protecting the police department, protecting uh, City Hall protecting buildings in that nature. Would we get a, uh, a list of all those 45 buildings that would be protected? What I would tell you is this is that's going to be fluid because what will happen is let's say to, to you know it's not this building it's um, it's uh, 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 you know the maybe the Soldiers Memorial or something we, we just don't know so part of what you're asking for is how 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 rigid the plan is the plan has to be very fluid because we're having this conversation and Monday may roll around and nothing happens, guys. So we don't know what will happen, what won't happen. All we can do is plan for every scenario and then be fluid enough to be able to address those scenarios. I, I, I just wanted to piggyback. I, I think a few more aldermen and folks talked about, uh, you know, the, the difference between the protesters and the criminals. And I think it's, it's um, that, and that, that we have to, you know, make sure that we uh, disseminate between the two because at the end of the day, I think like Joe said and like uh, all the one of the said, we still going to have regular criminals out doing it. Yeah, I mean, ever since uh, the incident with Mike Brown, that hasn't stopped crime in our community, uh, killings and, and rapes. And I absolutely agree. And I think that that's kind of, I, I, maybe I didn't say it clearly, but I said that the majority of the people that are protesting are here just to express their First Amendment right. And, and we want to protect them just like we want to protect everybody else. So part of that is making sure that occurs. Uh, and you're right, there's that element that we have to be prepared for and, and be able to address and handle those when that element happens. So we have a similar plan to roll out for the, for the criminals uh, as well. Okay. Oh. So what I hear you saying is the only uh, law enforcement we should be seeing in the city are city police officers and national guards. So no county police, private police. Unless.
Okay, so the answer to that question is yes, unless. Uh, all, uh, right now, the city is not targeted. The two primary target spots are Ferguson and St. Louis County. That's the two spots that we're hearing the most when it comes to intel. And so those are the areas. That's not to say that there won't, because there was a list that was put out of 50 different locations, uh, although we don't know how they came up with those locations. There's 50 different locations on that list. So we just don't know. As I said, we will be fluid, but you are correct. That is what we're going to do. Okay. All the one from the 19. One of the things I think we should talk more about is what the community has been doing and being prepared as well. Because it's not just our responsibility for this to come out with a good outcome. And so there's been a lot of uh, training being done and I think there's been over 40 organizations that are working together. They've been trained on peaceful uh, demonstration. Uh, they've also, uh, un they understand the lawful things that you must do. And so those meetings have been taking place together. Uh, I was in one of the trainings last Saturday when something broke out over on Shaw and we sent a troop of people over there to determine whether or not these were peaceful demonstrators or people who were causing problems. They were peaceful, that group came back, continued our training. So there's a lot, the community as a whole is involved and I think a lot of what is planned to happen will be very peaceful. And I think that, that most of the things that we're talking about today is just in case. And so, preferably we won't need the National Guard. Uh, our police officers have gone through additional training uh, for the last two months. I appreciate that. I also know that those who are now going on 12-hour shifts, they're also understanding what is required of them. And so I want all, all of the communication to be told about what's going on. It's not just your responsibility, because you can't do it by yourself. And we were also taught and given the information to our neighborhood organizations that if you need, any, if there's an emergency situation on your block, call the desk lieutenant at the precinct. And so we've got those numbers out there. That's the most efficient person, because the captain might be busy. You know the chief is busy. But that person who, who is navigating the policing in your area is your lieutenant on the desk. All right. Um, um, yeah, so I've got a couple of questions here. Um, first, um, the National Guard, I'm still trying to get down to what their role is going to be. So uh, I saw on television that um, they said National Guardsmen were going to be placed with officers, city officers. So will National Guardsmen be uh, roaming alone, or will they be matched with city officers? First question. That, that's still be determined because we don't know the number that we're going to be receiving. Okay, but so when is that going to be determined? So if something's going to happen, a number from them. But the whole purpose of the National Guard is not to put them on the front line. They're here to protect our buildings. They're here to protect our, the uh, uh, police departments, and that's really the areas that we're looking at uh, okay, engaging so them. I hear you saying that though. So what does that mean, protecting a building? So if they're standing on a building, uh, so similar to how they were in Ferguson, they were standing on the roofs of the Krogers and the, sh and the Schnooks with assault rifles. So if somebody comes up to break a, a window, what will the National Guard's people do? Are they going to shoot them? That is going that's to not the plan. Them? Are they going to call the police? They're going, they're, that's not the plan to shoot anybody. So what do you mean by protect businesses? Guarding the buildings. With assault rifles. I didn't say assault rifles. That's part of the information I don't have, so I can't answer that question for you. All right, so I'm not going to sit here and speculate for something I don't know. So you guys don't have a plan for that yet? No. There's a plan for that, but I'm not a part of that piece. <laughs> okay, second question. So if, uh, if National Guard soldiers are in the city of St. Louis, um, who is in charge of them? So who gives them command? So if they engage in behavior we don't appreciate or we want to see change, do we call you or who do we call? Contact me. But we will have, we'll contact me, but we'll have that done for you as well. I'll get you that information. So too. will National Guardsmen be under the command of, of the City of St. Louis? Of the City of St. Louis. Okay. All right. So, and um, with regard to, you know, there are a lot of different groups and efforts uh, that are trying to control the behavior uh, and keep uh, protests peaceful and protesters peaceful. 
but there are very few that can keep police officers peaceful and hold them accountable, and you are one of those few. So when I was out there, uh, I saw several different officers, sometimes from city, sometimes from county, uh, who engaged in behavior I would call uh, provoking, okay? Um, sometimes they pointed weapons at, at uh, people. Sometimes they called them animals. Sometimes they told them to, quote, bring it. Uh, in those cases, what I'm not hearing is police accountability. So are you, or who will hold our officers accountable to make sure they engage uh, in a certain level of professionalism that does not provoke a situation? We will, I, I will be the person that will be responsible for that. So if we see something or hear something, we should contact you? Yes. Will officers be wearing name tags? Yes. That has not always happened. Is it illegal for them to turn their name tag over and to hide it and not to identify themselves? I don't believe we were the ones that were hiding our name tags. I asked the question, is it legal for them to not respond to what they're, because I've always been taught for many, many years that when you request for an officer, what is, uh, what what is it's not, it's not called DSN. DSN, DSN. DSN is, that he's supposed to give that to you. Is that? That's my understanding. Okay, so we can relay that to you. Yes. Hey, I wanna see, um, Jennifer, do you have anything, any questions? Daily, Greg, you have any questions? Uh, Florida, you have any questions? All right, let's keep going. All of them from, all of, all of them from the 12th year. No, I mean, just to follow up, I mean, there's, so unless, I mean, I honestly believe things aren't going to be bad like every, everybody thinks. And it's good to be prepared. And the alderman from, uh, alderman French is saying, you know, who's going to be accountable, accountable for the police and engagement and everything that's wrong. And I guess we're hoping, you're saying you're in charge, I guess, a lot of people are hoping who's going to be in charge of the people against the game that's going to, I mean, in not peaceful protesters, and, and all my friends should tell you, I, mean, I know he was up there, you know, kind of wailing on the instigators, which, I think the peaceful protesters are going to have a lot on their hands. And, you know, I just read people who protest have every right to just protest and peacefully for your, your amendment. But what you're saying is the city is not going to be short any policemen unless it gets out of hand, they will have to go. So the question is who takes over in the city for a burglary, a robbery, or a shooting? Who will respond to that? Our police department will. We'll still have some police department. All of our police department will be there for that. Okay. We're good. So, uh, is there any, in the middle of this? Um, there, you want to talk about the meeting yeah. that's taking place today? Well, so a lot of you had questions um, about the rules of engagement, and some of you may not even know what that means. So, um, there are 50 different organizations that approached um, us under uh, two different banners, hands up and don't shoot. And they wrote down 19 proposed rules of engagement. Um, they did not want to um, negotiate, and I won't get into what their reasoning is or their thinking, you can certainly talk to them. But they did want to meet, and they did meet, in fact, with um, Chief Belmar, Captain Johnson, Chief Dotson, and Dan Isom, who is the State Public Safety Director. And I guess the best way to put it is uh, to discuss the rules of engagement, not to negotiate them. And again, expressly, the, the protest groups did not want to negotiate. They said, this is our expectation. However, they did want to open up the lines of communication. So I think they met either by conference call or in person five times. And again, it was really all law enforcement on the government side. And again, it was not a, um, it was not a negotiation, but it did open up lines of communication. So for instance, there are now going to be direct lines of communication between the protest groups and law enforcement at both the high level to the chiefs uh, and uh, to the street level with the uh, lieutenants and the commanders who are in charge at the street level. So that was a very positive thing that came out of that. In essence, because it was not a negotiation, there was not a back and forth, it was more of a communication, the protesters put forward their 19 and in essence the government has responded to them. Because the, again, the protesters specifically did not want to negotiate. Um, and I don't know how the police commanders felt about it, but it wasn't an option. So there were 19 that were put forward. The, uh, the unified command agreed to more than half of them. 
They couldn't agree to a few of them because, for instance, they wanted 48 hours notice and that's out of the control of the police. That's the uh, county uh, prosecutor's um, uh, issue. There were a few that, not very many, but a few that uh, maybe only one that Unified Command simply said no. And then there were several that the Unified Command either said yes to with caveats or said we will do it on a case by case basis. And I'll go through those. I won't waste your time with the others because some of them are simple like the first priority shall be preservation of human life. Unified Command agrees. I won't waste your time with those. I'll go through some that were, uh, had more uh, nuanced Okay, I'll just go through a couple of them that are more nuanced. I won't go through the ones that are obvious. Like one was don't cut off the internet. They agreed to that. I won't waste your time with those. Um, one was police will wear only the attire. And the first thing I'm going to read is what the um, protest group said, and then I'll talk about the unified command's response. Police will wear only the attire minimally required for their safety. Specialized riot gear will be avoided except as last resort. And the, the response, again, this is what they wrote down, but there were a lot of discussions about this. Um, at the end of the day, what the Unified Command said is that they are not going to use their attire in order to intimidate or otherwise um, try to break up, um, break up the um, protest and the demonstrations, that they would only use their protective gear when they felt they needed it to protect police officers. It would not be used to intimidate um, protesters. Um, uh, every attempt will be made to pinpoint arrests so that only individual lawbreakers will be arrested. Kettling and mass arrests will not be used. The commanders agreed with the first sentence. On the second one, they said police will only arrest demonstrators who violate the law. Kettling, and I had not heard this term before, apparently is an English term where you arrest people en masse. So what they're get, what, uh, the wording on the protester side wasn't particularly exact. I think what they were getting at is if three people in a group break the law, you're not going to arrest the 50 people around them. But what the police said is if there are 50 people laying down in the street, they're going to arrest the 50 people laying down in the street. They talked about all of that and, and the, you know, really, again, the way I think the protesters, what they meant, they weren't really exactly precise in their language, but I think this is, this should be, um, I think in the, in the discussions uh, that went well. Safe houses uh, shall be considered sacred ground and only entered by police when called upon extremely necessary. Um, the unified command is going to honor safe houses. Subterfuge will not be used to enter. Uh, however, life, safety, and exigent circumstances uh, would be valid reasons. In addition, at least in the city, and I don't know what's happening in the county, there's one safe house, and the mayor and the chief went to see the pastor at the, at the safe house and said, hey, if we're coming in, we're going to let you know, and we're going to let you know why, and it will only be under uh, extreme uh, circumstances, and she thought that was good, and she agreed. Um, where's the one that's sort of the, the one that we're, okay. Strategically, police commanders will allow protesters to take and occupy larger and more disruptive spaces that would normally be tolerated and will allow occupy, uh, occupation of those spaces for longer periods of time that would normally be tolerated. And the police said on a case by case basis. Um, they will not allow people to occupy private property. So if they go to somebody's, uh, they go to a shopping center and sit down there, the police will say, hey, that's fine that you sat down. If you don't want to be arrested, would you please leave? Otherwise, we'll arrest you for trespassing. On public property, um, they will do a case-by-case -case basis, and that's probably mostly going to be streets. So I think you all know that there was a, there was a demonstration in the loop on uh, Sunday and in Clayton on Monday. And on Sunday, I think about 50 protesters laid down in the middle of Del Mar and drew lines around themselves, and it was a, I think they called it a die-in. And they were allowed to occupy the road. Um, as pretty much as long as they wanted, which I don't know how long it was, 15 or 20 minutes, and then they left. That would be an example of uh, a circumstance in which they could occupy space. In this building, um, we will allow them to occupy common areas like the rotunda, um, but they will not be uh, allowed to occupy people's uh, private offices. Um, and so the case-by-case -case basis, because the protesters really couldn't say what their intentions are for two reasons. One, they didn't want to tip their hand, and two, they really don't know what they're going to do. It was difficult for them to get very specific other than a case-by-case -case basis and open up these lines of communication for direct discussions on how these things would happen. 
Police will be instructed to be tolerant of more minor law breaking, such as thrown water bottles when deciding when to escalate the use of force. What the protesters are concerned about is if one knucklehead throws a bottle at cops, they won't use that as an excuse to send everybody home. Again, it's kind of difficult to, to, to figure out what you're going to do on every case. So police said they would only take action to protect public safety. They will not use singular minor offenses as an excuse to disband protest. Um, and that's uh, how they uh, uh, you know, discuss that. But at the end of the day, that'll be another one of those things where the protesters and the police commanders are just going to have to work it out um, at the scene because the protesters really you know, gave one example, which is what if one guy throws a water bottle? Okay, well, we're not going to send everybody home because one guy threw a water bottle, but then what happens if 50 people throw water bottles? And so they, they weren't sure what to expect. So that's how they worked it out. Again, it is not an agreement. Specifically, the protesters did not, because their followers did not want them to do this, did not want to negotiate an agreement. They, in essence, uh, had brought this forward, used the five meetings to kind of go through different scenarios, open up lines of communication, get to know each other, maybe establish a modicum of trust. Um, but that, that's what we're, the mayor and the county executive and uh, Dan Isom are going to talk about this afternoon. Any further questions? I know you had one. I can't remember. Can't remember. Can't, can't remember now. Uh, any any further? All the one from the front. She, I think she just you remember. I did remember. Um, IDs to enter neighborhoods. Is that um, I have reports after sh uh, the shooting in Shaw that. I don't know what will happen on private streets, but on public streets, people do not need to have an identification to be on a public street. Now, I don't know what the rules will be on private streets, but on public streets, you don't need an ID to go into a neighborhood. Yeah. Let me one more piece. Uh, the, the information that was covered by um, Jeff was in reference to uh, a 2 o'clock, 2.30 press conference that the mayor and um, uh, uh, Mr. Dooley will be having this afternoon. One of the questions that came up earlier was, you know, who does the various different elected officials, who do they contact in an emergency? And, um, you know, we, we're going to, I know we're going to get the phone number from the, from the chief and the public safety director. I don't know if anything else has, has well, come about level, from that. If it's an immediate issue, you've got to go to your, you know, in your district. You've got to go to the people you deal with in your district. You're not going to want to go through chains of command if it's something that's happening now. If it's a concern you have in general, like you think we're mucking it up, you know, you can call the mayor directly, you can call me directly, you can call, uh, you can call Rich directly. But if it's like happening right now, you should start at the, at the district level and at the neighborhood level uh, and not have to work up and then have it work back down. But again, if it's a general complaint or a philosophy exactly. or something that is not of an immediate nature, you should feel free to either call me directly, call the mayor directly, call Sam Dotson directly. We're all going to be in the same place at the Emergency Operations Center, so feel free to call No, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't my question. No, it wasn't. That was, that was a question that was asked. The other question was, uh, as far as communication, will there be communication coming from you guys to others? Or does each individual elected official have to try to reach the chief during a time of emergency? So it sort of depends on, this, on the circumstances. If things are really, really, you know, happening quickly um, and we are focused on getting information out to as many people as possible, as quickly as possible, we'll probably do it through the news media. If things are a little bit slower, and again, I, don't, I, don't, I, I, I hope it's going to be the latter. If things are slower, we will figure out through uh, Patrick and Mary Ellen how to communicate to you, with you directly. You know, and, and generally what has happened in the past is, is that things are slower during the day and then get pretty rap, move very rapidly at night. So there may be some opportunities where we can come over. Right. There may be some opportunity during the day when things are moving more slowly where we could come over and give you all updates right here um, during the day. Because generally, even the first time around, uh, and during October, during the day, things move slowly and then move quickly at night. And there probably is the opportunity to do this during the day. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for the meeting. I want to thank all the from the 21st for writing the letter. Um, so I say this to say, why haven't we been, we've been knowing this is going to come for a while. Who's been uh, communicating with whom? Why haven't we had some updates before this time so that we're not all at the last minute? Because this was something that we're going to have a grand jury decision sooner or later anyway. Um, 
And so are, do we have a group of people meeting like the president? Are you meeting you, the mayor and the comptroller? You, the mayor, the comptroller, and the chair of public safety and, and the director of what? Because Maybe. I would think that we would get some of our information directly from you as the president of the board. Okay, so I don't understand that. So the main issue is, is that um, we had, and most of you and most of the public has known when this was going to occur. And we've used every minute that we can to plan for it. And the one thing we did not want to do is two weeks ago say it was going to be A, and then two weeks later say it was going to be B while we were planning through it, and have everybody say, well, would you get your story straight? You know, And we know that we'll give little caveats. Well, yeah, that was her thinking then, now is her thinking now, but you know how press is and all of that. So we really wanted to make sure that we were really had in place what we were going to do, how we were going to handle situations, and what we expected before we started speculating, saying, well, this is what we think, but we're still thinking about it. We wanted to be sure-footed when we started talking about it, and we did use every minute that we thought that we had based on the timing that the county executive gave us to do the planning. And so we didn't want to speculate, guess, or things like that. And I do understand uh, that you know we've really only been talking about this for the last week, um, uh, but before that, we were still not sure ourselves. I mean, there are things, there are things that we thought we were going to do two weeks ago that were very dramatic that if we had talked about it two weeks ago, I think people would have taken the wrong way, and then we ultimately decided not to do it anyway. So that's how the timing worked out. Okay, and so I will say again, we have a president of the Board of Aldermen for a reason. So he should be included, the comptroller should be included. I don't know if the chair, so my question again is, was the chair of uh, public safety, who would be Ms. Alderwoman Young, why would you at least have some semblance of including the Board of Aldermen? Uh, most of the aldermen that I have spoken to feel very much left out. We know the difference about this is something we're thinking about and we're not going to do. I often talk to the police, uh, my captains, and they'll say, well, Alderwoman, this is not for release, so I can keep it to myself, or yes, you can tell your, the, your group of citizens. So to me, we should be getting stuff from the president, and you have excluded the president to me that is a, a mission that you should not be doing anymore, okay? Because he is the president of all the Board of Aldermen, and he should be included. And the other thing I wanted to ask you, Mr. Gray, is have we had any training with the police since this stuff is going on about how to de-escalate, okay? Because the things that happened, the Michael Brown situation, I could have handled it 50,000 times better, okay? I still say, because I handle it all the time in the streets. And if you come to my corner, they will tell you, you better get out these corners because Ms. Tyus is coming out here because I don't deal with them the, the way that they do. So I'm hoping that you all teach them about de-escalation because it really does work. And sometimes I get cussed out, but mostly I get support from the young black kids who will say, Ms. Tyus don't talk to us like that. Don't you do that to her. So I hope you are teaching them that everything is not to escalate. Some things are to de-escalate. Yes, we have. And let me, uh, exp let, me, let me just say uh, that's, a, uh, that's really rich in the chief as far as the actual training. As far as the direction from the mayor, the direction from the mayor is it is not the job of the police to regulate the speech, to agree or disagree with the speech, and to uh, uh, change their tactics and strategies based on the speech. It is um, not our job to break up protests. Um, it is our jobs actually to ensure that people uh, can gather and can uh, uh, bring their uh, grievances to their government and can speak, even if that speech is directed against police and directed against the government. And that's a lot of what the, the mayor and the county executive and Dan are gonna talk about today. So the attitude at the top, and I get that what you're asking is a tactical question, which is a legitimate one. How are you actually gonna do that? But we do not view, you know, there are, there are a lot of folks uh, through talk radio, through social media, through whatever, who are like, why don't you put an end to this? And I want to tell you expressly, for better or worse, and some of you may feel that way, why don't we put an end to this? That is not the job of the government in America, is not the job of government to regulate people's right to uh, assemble or their right to speak or uh, to regulate uh, speech that we like or don't like. And so we will not be changing our tactics based on that. Um, so that, that is sort of a higher level answer to your question. You, you know, certainly it's up to Ch uh, Sam and the chief to figure out how to do that. I will tell you during um, Ferguson October, um, I think some of you know that some of the things that were said to our police officers were, um, if you were objective about it, vile and awful. You know, things about we're going to kill your family and they were spit on. And our officers um, kept their composure, kept their professionalism, and did not take actions against any protesters based on their speech. Um, so I can't speak for, nor can Quinn Rich or anybody else speak for 
the numerous mistakes that have made in Ferguson, but I think that this police department has a track record of protecting public safety and ensuring people's constitutional rights to assemble and to speak. Mr. Yes. I, uh, too, want to follow up with the uh, question and, and uh, would like to have an answer. We asked it before you came in. It's the same thing that the older woman was saying about actually showing the elected officials of this city that are responsible for the constituents as well that we represent the uh, ability to even just know what's going on. That's number one, just a common courtesy to know what's going on. And then the other thing would be that if possible to invite us to the meeting so that we can give some sort of input as well. I know that it's not totally our responsibility. We're not the police chief. We're not the director of public safety. And we're not the mayor. But we are elected officials. The people have confidence in us. They want information. And so that's all we're talking about. It, that's all I'm talking about. But I think that the, the question was not answered by the uh, Alder Woman Titus about when were we going to be notified, uh, if at all. And I, I just got a letter, like I said yesterday, uh, from the mayor after I had also uh, just read it on Facebook and also the, business, the morning business journal. So that's, that's the question about communication. Just appreciation, communication, respect that we also too are elected officials. Yeah, and I think we also need to thank the public safety director for, for agreeing to this meeting. Uh, when we talked to him a week or so ago, uh, he, he put it together and he said, yes, I'll be there and I'll give the update because it's just so important for us to, to, uh, to have that information. And what I was just talking to him about, he said that's his effort to begin to reach out and make sure people have, have information. So I want to thank him for agreeing to the, the public safety director for agreeing to that. But the central point still remains right. and that there is a void Correct. of information and we're not, there's no burden of diet of information coming over. And I think that's something that we'll have to work on in after. Sure. So we will do that. How you right. So let me just say a couple things. One is circumstances sometimes move uh, faster than we have the ability to control. So for instance, the governor called the mayor 20 minutes, or actually his deputy chief of staff called the governor 20 minutes before he was gonna call out the guard. We didn't have time to come over here because he was, it was 20 minutes uh, later. So sometimes circumstances move quickly. The second thing is, is that the public demands information and the press demands information very quickly. And we're gonna move that as quickly as we can. And sometimes that's gonna be immediate and that is how it's going to happen. But I think that Rich, by, you know, and he wants to speak to this point, he can talk about how we can have uh, regular communication so that you can get the information and have your questions answered. Yeah, no, he did that before he came. Okay, right. And, that, and that's a major, major issue. All the, I have a question for Jeff. Uh, so I want to follow up. I, I asked uh, the public safety director this, and he couldn't give me an answer. My questions are about the role of the National Guard in the city of St. Louis. And so, number one, um, are they going to be, I saw in a media report, and I'm trying to find out if it's true or not, will they be matched with city officers while they're here? Is that your question? The answer is yes. Okay. If in that role, who is in charge? Um, we are in charge. Again, the guard, in case some of you either didn't understand the letter or would like further context, we are not going to use the guard. Uh, to interact with protesters. The Guard are really to be out in uh, areas where we don't expect protests to uh, protect against random acts. Um, and that's our use of the Guard. And so the Guard will be in, in, in onesies and twosies. So you won't see, you know, 100 Guardsmen in one place. You'll see two Guardsmen and a police officer. And is their role, as I, again, saw in media, to protect property? Their goal, really, at the end of the day, I think that they are both for very, very small acts. You know, two guardsmen and a police officer, certainly if 100 people decided they were going to loot a, uh, a store, three people aren't going to stop them. So I think there's two reasons or two uh, things that they can do. Number one is they will uh, uh, keep away relatively small groups of potential looters. And then secondly, they'll act really more as a warning sign if a large number of looters show up. And we're not talking about protesters again. We're talking about looters. A large group shows up. 
you know, the call will go out and other uh, police officers will then show up at the scene. So it's really, you know, a, a kind of, if you really want to be honest about it, I don't like putting it this way, but sort of glorified um, guards. So uh, in that situation, the the, if there's an officer in National Guard, the officer is in charge? Yes. Now again, you're asking me to what our intention is and to predict every possible situation, including situations that we cannot envision. But that is, um, I can't envision a situation in which it would work differently than that. But, you know, if we, there, there may be a situation that arises that we didn't think about where they would be used differently, but we can't think of what that is. So, yes, they are being used to protect property. And uh, uh, we do, even with the, um, even with looters, I do not expect them to even uh, interact much there in the, in, in the sense that police officers will. Again, I think if you had three people, for instance, at, um, at Gravois Plaza and 15 people show up, I'm pretty sure with the, three, with the two guardsmen and the police officer, they will, they will leave. But if for some reason they don't, then we will call in more police officers to deal with the situation. That's what we envision. And the locations you selected, these 45 locations, um, are you are you going to let us know if any of those? Well, you'll all see where they are. I actually uh, I haven't memorized the list, and I don't think there's a reason for the chief not to tell you because everybody's going to see it. But it'll be government buildings and locations uh, where um, we think looting uh, and random acts of violence might occur. Uh, so you can imagine where those are in your areas. And, and, um, but I have not memorized them, uh, but I don't see a reason for you all not to know because you're going to see them anyway. It, well, as I said earlier, too, is if it's going to be fluid, too, because if there may be a, a building that we didn't think or project to be there, we may have to move them to there, too. But so you can share the current I'll let, I'll, I'll let you do that. Right. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to follow up on the citywide elected officials. If they haven't been receiving the correspondence that we've been receiving, I would ask you to go back and bring them up to date on what we've received thus far, like the list of the demands and all that stuff. Because that's important that they also have the exact same information as we have. And then add them to the email list that's been going out. And I don't know if anybody else in here thinks it, but I think committee people should have information too. Because they're in our wards, and sometimes they're busy and moving about more than I am. You know, for residents. So I don't, unless you think it's something very sensitive that couldn't go that far down the communication chain, I think it's helpful for all of us to have as many people informed as possible. So I just wanted to, you know, make sure that that information is brought up to today. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to, that's uh, public safety director. First, I want to say, uh, the, my experience during the, the night of the uh, shooting on Shaw was that police acted with an abundance of restraint in that situation. In a situation where there were a lot of angry people um, and uh, they, they were focused on doing their job and did their job and uh, moved on. So my experience with the city police department has been um, not antagonizing. Protesters. Um, I, I also wanted just to get a little more explanation. I, I think a question my constituents have had and will have. Tell us about sort of regular police work um, that goes on and how how police coverage works um, for for routine sort of uh, calls to the police over the next week or two. How, how do can we can we can we ensure residents that there are uh, there's police manpower available for regular stuff. And I, I obviously know we're staffing to do that, but like response. There should be more people yeah. for that because our off, our off, the, while the guardsmen are going to be static, our police officers are not. And so we're going to be on 12 hour shifts, and Rich can get into that, but we're actually going to have more officers in our neighborhood and in, in neighborhoods. And in some manner, having the guardsmen being able to stay and watch means we don't have to have police officers stay and watch which means we can actually have them out in our neighborhoods. Um, but I'll let Rich uh, get into this. Again, it, it stated earlier, but they, they'll be more visible because you're, you're taking a, uh, one shift. Let's say there's, there's, there's 400 people on a shift. You're adding 200 to each shift. So you're increasing the number of police officers out there. And as I stated earlier, their goal is to be to protect the city of St. Louis and to do their regular job. That's what we're putting them out there for. 
Hey, let me say one thing related to what Alderman Cohn said as far as um, how things went in Shaw the first time around. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, what, what did I say? Cohn? Alderman Ogilvie. Sorry, Alderman. Um, so we've had lots of discussions with uh, leaders of the protest groups, and one of the ideas that has kicked around is the idea that we'd have sort of these neutral observers out in the protests who could you know, without uh, bias could work with both sides to try to prevent misunderstandings. And yesterday, and we actually had put that forward, that idea a few weeks ago, and nobody seemed interested in it. And then yesterday, one of the protest, uh, one of the protest groups uh, called me and said, hey, are you still interested in an idea? And I said, yes. So I, and he said, well, we're interested in it too. So we talked about how it could work. I, I checked out with some of our colleagues in St. Louis County, and they said, that's too late, we're not interested. I called them back and said, well, I can't help you with St. Louis County, but we'll do it in the city. And the guy said, well, don't bother. We don't need it in the city. We don't need that. We need it out in the county. So that kind of tells you that the protester groups already are expecting, uh, if, uh, to um, Alderman Ogilvie's point, are already expecting different things in the city that they don't think we need these observers in the city, but they wanted us in the city to try to pull it off in the county. So, I mean, I think they're even acknowledging that things have been happening better and differently in the city than in other parts of the region. Well, and Jeff, I, I will tell you, since you guys, you know, keep mentioning the eighth board, and you and I have not talked about this. I, as a matter of fact, I haven't talked to you in a couple of months. Uh, what we did in the eighth ward, and the chief and I agreed, we supposed the police out, and we used Mason people to direct traffic. Um, and to keep the protesters safe from the cause. We do that with neighborhood people. Um, the police obviously are the lightning force. I was there in person uh, when the protesters um, damaged the cars the first time. Um, it's a site that none of you would wish in real world. Um, and it was just absolutely, utterly shocking to see that type of response. But, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. I'm sorry, I wasn't talking to you, I was talking to you. Yeah, just continue. If I so to it, was, it was just utterly shocking what we saw. But the response that we've had with, the, with my neighbors and our safety committee was uh, to direct the traffic, let the protesters know that you know, we're not there to agitate them, to protect them, respect the residential characteristics. This is not for school. These words are not for school. Not a commercial district. Um, we convey that to the protesters um, that have shown up each day um, and they respect it. So we did not utilize the police to traffic control or any function like that. It seems to have worked. Um, I know that we do expect protesters. I know that some of you in this room you know, are working with the protesters. I'm not happy with that. Um, We'll address that at a different day. But the protesters will be able to exercise all of their free speech rights. They can go above and beyond the free, free speech rights um, in the eighth ward as long as it's not violent. Um, they will be safe. There will be no cars just crossing the streets. And that seems to be the most important thing is, is to keep the cars from trying to drive down the streets when the protesters are there because it leads to confrontations between people trying to go to work and honking their horns and the protesters aggravated that someone's honking their horns at them. Uh, the mayor's office, I, I listened to the mayor yesterday, I think he is promoting um, something in a very positive fashion. He's communicated with the protesting groups. Uh, he's embraced this de-escalation process that I think it's been very positive. Um, what has happened in the city is dramatically different than what has happened in Burgess. And I would just hope that on Monday or Tuesday, or the next Monday or Tuesday, that we have the same outcome that I've had for the past two weeks. I'm losing my hair, and it's getting great. But, uh, is there a question in there? I, I'm not finished yet. So anyway, I, I think we've done a pretty good job. I respect the police for what they've done in the tolerance that they've had um, in, in, in the confrontations that have occurred up on Grand Avenue. Uh, but again, communication, de-escalation is the key to success in the city of St. Louis.
Thank you. And they had, they had both of the both of you guys popped up at the same time. So you, the youngest. <laughs> um, uh, two questions. One about communication. One is to be clear about the National Guard. So the National Guard is going to augment the police, so they're doing riot or or they're in their own military vehicles. I don't even know if they'll have vehicles there. I don't know that level of detail. It's really sure. a person that we want. To and do you know what kind of weapon? Because the rifles, of course, creates the spirit. I don't. I don't think the purpose, again, is to scare people. The purpose is to protect. No, I, but I don't know. I don't know that question. Won't clarify. The other question is communications. I think if the mayor's going to do a press conference and he's going to talk about public safety, how we're bracing ourselves, or whatever it is that relates to public safety, getting information out to our constituents, it may be a little helpful if the alderman, at least, or the elected people officials get an email of the same press release that went out to the press. Is that something that can be done? Just the press we release that can. Can. Oftentimes, I think, uh, I'm going to leave it as a to get oh. the communication because oftentimes we're not using, because things happen so quickly. So when the governor called 20 minutes ahead of time to say the guard's coming out, the mayor didn't have a press release. He just got out quickly to say, well, you know the governor's making it sound like this is a military operation, but it's not. But we will absolutely work through Patrick and Rich to have direct communication with the board. Sure. I just want to say I have been doing that, so if you haven't been getting those emails, I just want to touch base with you so I can make sure I have your right information. But I've been trying to forward as many press conference or press releases straight to the board as possible. Yeah, but, but I, I, I now, at 2 30, because something was mentioned earlier, there was a press conference at 2 30. Is that something that we've got in our email? All right. I, I have an email from Hank Crane. And that is one thing that's going to happen is a lot of this is going to happen quickly. This today is happening quickly. So, but uh, Pat, it will be Patrick's job working with Rich to do that. Yeah. Hey, Alderman from the fourth, then you come. You say that the guard is here to guard, to watch over property and all? Oh. Random acts of uh, uh, criminal acts and violence uh, away from the protests. So they don't really need the help because you got those gun slinging merchants who deputize them to carry those guns while they are allowed to use those guns on people and on protesters. You know, that's a that's a vision so I could give you my okay. Well, then actually, you should take that other from They're not here today. But I want to know who's the deputizing them and why are we protecting them and they already armed. We allow them to walk around with machine guns and pistols out there in Ferguson or anywhere else. So that, that'll, that'll give them one the St. Louis to probably start carrying machine guns and all. We need to be checking who enforcing that. Is that a question? It don't matter. Is it a question? It doesn't matter who answers the question. What's that? It doesn't matter who answers the question. Uh, I know, but is it rhetorical or you no, I, I, Okay. So again, I could give you 20 minute diatribe against guns. The fact, I'm not going to, but the fact of the matter is is that the state of Missouri has made a decision. Um, they, there is conceal and carry. Now there's open carry. And now there is some, because of a new constitutional amendment, there's some question about whether you can do open carry without a permit. So there is no such thing as deputizing anybody. There's nobody deputized. But what you're talking about are people who are getting conceal and carry permits. That's allowed under state law. Who's allowing it? Um, the General Assembly in Jefferson City. Hey. And uh, back to the back to the question that we were debating a little bit earlier. Uh, I think what the elected officials are looking for is something beyond just the uh, that press release. Uh, the reason this is helpful today is because there is an opportunity for us to engage in some open discussions and to really dig down and understand. Uh, what what's happening and what's being planned and that kind of stuff. And I think it would be helpful moving forward to have more opportunities to do that. Yeah. I, I may take the uh, minority opinion here, but it's my my feeling we have to do some police officers deserve to be protected as well. And certainly if they're patrolling the street, having their name tag on who they are and a badge number I think is is an important component of accountability for the police department. However, if they are public in a very public area confronting large protests that are very visible to news media and everything else, the idea of them having their name tags in this day and age with what's going on with threats against the police department, I 
I think that's an unusual special circumstance. And I don't know if it's fair to ask police officers to go out in, a, in an environment that has their name on it when we have people that are putting contracts out on police officers and, and going to their social media websites and trying to find out who they are. I, I just, you know, I think, you know, I think the vast majority of the police officers are, are really, really uh, wonderful public servants, and, and I think it's, I think we have to be very, very careful about making their job, you know, more dangerous than what it always is. So there's multiple issues there. First of all, the mayor and all of us agree that the vast, vast majority of police officers um, are dedicated public servants who want to keep us safe and they are not the cause of the racial disparities that are underlie this. Um, they will be part of the solution. Um, Chief Dotson, Chief Belmar and others are not operating in a vacuum. Police chiefs all across the country are trying to figure out these issues, including the issue that you were talking about. The mayor uh, is certainly at, uh, at a high level, the mayor is going to give direction to the chief, but at the operational level, he's gonna let the chief do what he thinks is best. And on that particular issue, that's an issue that the chief will decide what's the best way to do it. And what the chief is trying to do and the mayor is trying to do is to balance, and this is very, very, let me tell you, it's what keeps us up at night. It is balancing, ensuring that we keep everybody safe, including police officers with, we don't want to make things worse by wrongly antagonizing people. And it is a difficult, difficult thing. And if you listen to talk radio, depending on which station you're on, people have taken extreme opposing views on this from people who are like, you're, you know, don't do anything to limit the police to don't do anything to protect the police. And we're trying to uh, do what we can to protect everybody, including the police. But at an operational level on the issue you're talking about, we're leaving that uh, up to the chief. And again, there are a lot of conversations going on, not only locally, but nationally. As a matter of fact, Attorney General Holder just put out a manual to guide police departments on how to uh, manage uh, these issues. And none of the politicians will do anything that will put the chief in a position where he has to unnecessarily put his men and women in danger. We will not do that. But by the same token, we do have a job to do to protect people's constitutional rights to assemble and to speak. And these are difficult issues because even within this room, I know that people have very strong polar opinions and our constituents do too. Um, and people view different things uh, or view the same thing from a very, very different lens and come to very, very different conclusions. And that's what makes this so volatile and difficult to deal with. But it's being done in an extraordinarily thoughtful, collaborative way, I can assure you of that. I wanna thank you for your patience. No problem. Um, the question everybody wants to know is, when is the announcement gonna be made? And what is your best information about that? I heard some reference to it. I, my phone battery's about to die, but I just saw that the Jennings and the school district is canceled classes for Monday and Tuesday. Like, that's not- Right, it is any day now. Um. Just a little bit more, Joe. How does the announcement get made? Is this a press conference? Is this just something that electronically happens? What, what is the right. Well, first of all, um, we don't have uh, any communication we have with the county prosecutor is probably four times removed. Certainly the mayor doesn't call Bob McCull and talk to him. Our chief doesn't call and talk to him. And by the time the information gets to us, it's Bob telling somebody who tells somebody who tells somebody who tells us. So take it with a grain of salt. Um, we are getting prepared for this weekend. I have no firsthand knowledge that it is this weekend, but we are getting prepared for this weekend. It is possible that the grand jury will, uh, the grand jurors will not be able to come to a conclusion and it might be after Thanksgiving, but, okay? But I'm, we're getting prepared for this weekend. And specifically, we're getting prepared for things to start leaking over the weekend and potentially coming out on Sunday. Now again, that's four times removed from the county executive, so don't take it to, don't take it to the bank. I do not know how the county executive is going to do it. What he has said publicly is that he is going to release all of the information that was in front of the grand jury. Now, common sense wise, if he takes that all and put like puts it on a dais like this, you know, with a uh, with a clerk and he's down in Boca, I mean, I don't think that's gonna work so well. So one would presume in some manner he's going to explain what happened. But we don't know that for sure, because again, we don't have direct uh, communications uh, with him. And even what I told you, I would, I would um, 
I think I would call that informed speculation because uh, we do not have direct lines of communication and do not know for sure. But we, are, we, we will be ready. We, 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 um, as I said before, we've been planning for uh, many weeks now and we will be ready to move uh, in a matter of hours. This is the last question. And um, before, before we get to you, we wanted to make sure that all the elected officials uh, had their questions because it was their meeting. It wasn't for members of the public, although we can't even call you a member of the public anymore. <laughs> you sit at the board so often. Uh, any further questions uh, from members of the board? Um, we'll entertain your question if it's a quick, direct question because we yeah, are, are public officials in the city of St. Louis being receiving the uh, threats. I, I know police families are receiving threats, and I'm just kind of curious: are they bringing you, you uh, public elected officials into this fray, or, or so there just are the cops? there are two kinds of threats. One is a real threat which uh, we take very seriously, and there are no threats that we would consider to be real against elected officials. Then there are the kinds of threats that you all see on Twitter and Facebook and in, in the press and that kind of thing. And when it comes to that, there are probably scores of them against the police chief, the mayor, you know, a handful against Rich and me and people like that. But as far as, you know, threats that are real and an imminent and, and clear and present danger, uh, there are none that we're aware of. And then I'd like to just close with this, and, I, and it's been said already. Um, we are proud of the actions that our police department has taken so far, the way they handled Shaw um, and how they dealt with the, the uh, issues of the protesters there. We will tell you that the additional training that we had will continue to move them in the direction of being able to handle themselves professionally in those uh, situations, and we are hoping that all of this information we talked about is just a conversation and that we're a week from now and we're just moving forward. So we don't know that, but that's what we're hoping for. And we do appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come in and, and get an update. Thank you. Thank you.